Alright, welcome back. In our previous video, we were using HTML forms to get data from the user. And to retrieve that data, we were using the method form value. Now, as you can see here, it returns a string. So it doesn't matter if we're returning, you know, an input from a, a text input. Um, it doesn't matter if we're using one that was a radio button or even of type number. It's still going to return a string. Now that might be an issue because maybe we wanted to return a number and we want to do some math on it. Well, we can't perform that math on a string. We need it to be an int, you know, or for instance, if it was a float. So what we're going to look at in this video is how we convert something, you know, that incoming string into the data type that we need it to be. So here we have our, our web form where we can give it a number, the number three, and Let's go 4.2262, whatever. And yeah, let's go ahead and receive updates. So we're going to perform some math on this one. We're just simply going to double it. And this one, we're just going to show how we can handle a float. So there we go. We doubled our 3 to a 6, and which meant that we had to have changed it to an int first. And we went ahead and just handled our float and passed it on down the line. Let's go ahead and take a look at our app. So at slash get form, we have our handler get form handler, and we're just rendering our, we're just uh, using our parsed template with the get form.html uh, parse file. And as you can see here, we have our text for our username that we passed in, and then we have one for number, which was our number between 1 and 10, and this one is expecting and in because it wasn't expecting any extra decimal places. Now our float, for it to expect, uh, you know, precision, you know, with multiple des uh, decimal places, we have to use the step attribute. So we can set that precision that we want to be able to use, and we couldn't use more than we have here. So let's say, go back to our form. I put a couple more numbers in here. Well, this, this is not going to let me do that because I haven't said, hey, I want to use that level of precision. And of course, that's right here with our step attribute. Then we have our radio button, which is just returning a string of true or false. And we're going to, re you know, depending on which comes in, we'll resign our value as true or false. Um, and of course, our submit. So let's go ahead and take a look at our application. So we're going to save our values into this substruct. And so we have a string, we have an int, we have a float, and we have a bool. And we're just going to go ahead and convert those as they're coming in as strings, convert them into the data type we would like them to be. Um, first one here, our username. Since it's already a string, um, we're, of course, we're just going to go ahead and give it that key. The username, like we said, is the name attribute. So. You, our name attribute is username. Um, so like in this case, we have two, you know, a different ID value from our name value. Just remember, you want to make sure you're using the name value of that attribute. And of course, it saved it. You know, and by the end of our handler here, when we go ahead and execute our, our thanks.html uh, parsed file, and we just pass in that s struct which has that value that uh that string as one of its fields um anyway now when we run this uh we run this form value method with the number name or our first number value uh notice that we're creating a new variable here we're saving this into just a, a variable called num and it's assigning it to it so that one's going to go ahead and be a string and we can't down here, we're going to want to perform some, some calculations. We want to just double it. If we keep it as a string, we're not able, you can't multiply a, a string by two and get the numerical value. Now, it just doesn't work that way. So what we're going to use is the string convert package. And the method that, the function we're going to use there is the ASCII to int method. So this is simply going to take a string and it's going to go ahead 
and attempt to give us an int back. And I'm just going to go ahead, and as you can see here, I'm just going to go ahead and throw away that error. So this converts our string, which at our number, and it's going to go ahead and parse that and turn it into a number type for us. And so here we run our math on it, we double the number, and so on. Now on our next one, we're going to have to deal with a float, and we're going to use a string convert package again, but we're going to use the parse float. Um, actually, I have this right here showing what would happen if we try to change an ASCII to an int when we're using a float. So let's just go ahead and uh, we could go ahead and show that. Eh, well, I, we don't need to show that error, but anyway. So if we tried to use this chunk of code here and we tried to run the string converts package uh, function ASCII to int after pulling in our float, our float value, well, it it's going to see like, hey, this it can't convert a float to an int. You know, it's expecting you know something that's already an int, and that's why we need to use this parse float and set instead. You know, still expecting a string, but it's expecting something that we can parse into a float. Now on this parse float uh, function, our second parameter here is going to be the bit size. So this one, we're going to make it a float 64. If we wanted to, we could go ahead and make it a a float. We could have the precision at float, thir uh, float 32. Anyway, we're going to use uh, 64, and we're going to go ahead and return the error. And if the error is not nil, we're going to go ahead and run, you know, going to go ahead and uh, log fatal. And so that will eventually save that float value, chain, you know, return a float value, which will get saved into our struct dot my float field. And uh, moving on to our radio button, since we're passing a string of either true or false, since we have to check if it's true or false anyway, if if we get a true return from our form value for our update name, if it returns true and it is e which is equal to a string, if a string of true is returned and it's equal to a string of true, then yeah, we're just going to go ahead and save a boolean to that field. Now, on the other hand, if it's false, a string, a string, you know, false, then we'll go ahead and assign the boolean value false to that field. And of course, here at the end, we're going to go ahead and just run, or I'm sorry, uh, just execute our template using our thanks.html file. And of course, our struct is going to go ahead and get passed in. So if we take a look at that, um, pretty straightforward. We're just passing in each one of those fields. Now looking at that, we probably, you know, kind of hammer home the point that, hey, that this is a float. Maybe we should have performed some kind of calculation on it to show like, hey, it's not a string and you know, that we actually did convert it over to a, to a float. But anyway, um, go ahead and so, like I said, change the values, whatever you want, but you need to change it to something, you know, it's going to go ahead and handle it. Um, also, doesn't matter if you're using a post, it's going to, you know, it's pulling the same, the values the same way. Go back. Go to our different path, the post form. You know, it's still going to go ahead and perform the same operation. It's just it's passing the inf instead of passing information up here, it's passing in the body um, of that request. Um, anyway, uh, sometimes people kind of get caught up on that being it's always returning a string, but uh, maybe in the core packages course we should go ahead and maybe I'll go ahead and just cover some of the string convert uh, package functions anyway. But I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.